Hey, it's Ethan. We're hanging out at Rocklahoma with the Gavin Rossdale from Bush. How are you doing, brother? I'm good. How are you, sir? Doing all right. How was the? Uh, was it a drive-in, a flight-in? How was the travel? Uh, the travel was very, very uh, wheel-based. We stayed last <laughs> night in Tulsa, so okay. it wasn't too bad. Oh, no, we came in this morning by bus. Terrible night's sleep. <laughs> and uh, walking around downtown, empty Tulsa, no one there apart from some homeless people. <laughs> so one homeless guy, I thought it was going to be trouble. But he was, because I, I just did this. I moved my arms back, just opened my shoulders, and he was like, hey. And then he walked past me. He's a bit small than me, but he seemed angry. And then he picked out a whole load of trash, and he threw it down on the ground. I was like, oh, no, mental guy. And the only problem was I was wearing slides. So I was just like ready for him, but it was all right. He was angry at the world, and I just happened to be in his world momentarily. He's just a fan. Oh, no, he wasn't <laughs> a fan of anyone. Oh, this guy God. was not a fan of life. He was struggling. Well, hey, man, fan I want to talk meth, about... I think. Oh, God. <laughs> <laughs> Let's chat about the art of survival, dude. <laughs> Speaking of, <laughs> yeah. you know... Uh, Cut to, segue. Right. Yeah, exactly. Bush. The, uh, the deluxe edition just came out a couple months ago. Um, when it comes to putting out deluxe editions, are you going back and putting together a couple of new songs to add to do a re-release, or are those songs that are kind of leftovers from the uh, the album? Uh, well, project? I was just trying to stay alive in 2023. <laughs> you know, it doesn't make too much sense to me in some ways because, you know, just put those new songs on a new record. But in this world where 30 million records come out every year, I think that the, 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 the wisdom is that if you read that, if you have, we wrote something new. I wrote All Things Must Change for that record, did a version with Amy Lee of A Thousand Years. So you get a chance to kind of just reimagine, just, just give it a little, a little vibe, a little reheat, you know? Right. And um, so as long as the, you know, and we, so we did two new songs, it was cool. Yeah, I mean, I, to me it's well worth it because it's not even people able to buy it. A lot of people just hear it on the radio or they stream it. So it's like, you know. You know. Right. And All Things Must Change is really blown uh, someone's up. Gonna, someone's going to order a drink soon, I'm telling you. Mm -hmm. They're one. not going to find can drinks over here. Can I have a nice latte? Here. You can, can order as much as you want. <laughs> and a fizzy water, please. What's up? Um, as far as like A Thousand Years goes with Amy Lee, how, was, how did you pick her as the collaborator to bring her in? What was the thought process behind that? We were playing in Nashville at the, the, the legendary place there, the Ry uh, Ryman Theatre, it used to be an old church, and we just figured it'd be fun to invite Amy and then get her to sing with me. I asked her just to come and sing that night, and I sent her the song and uh, I was thinking, and I didn't hear back from her for a week, and I was <laughs> thinking, oh no, I screwed up and I shouldn't have asked the director, I felt bad. <laughs> and then she sent back a recording that she'd done of it. She just sang on it in her studio, and it was so incredible that... Um, we did the song and then I was like, do you mind if we put this out? Because it's really beautiful. And so we did. And I, I've always loved her voice so much that it's one of my favorite things I've ever done is being on a record with her. Is there any chance we could get a tour? Or would we get a chance to well, see it that's live? That's what I was hoping it would lead to. You yeah. know, I thought we were going to do, do the Far East together, but I don't know what happened with that. But I would always uh, tour with Evanescence. I'd always tour with her. Her band's great. She's great. It's a win, 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 win. Everything's great about her. Yeah. Now, if I'm doing my math correctly, and I might not be. I'm from Topeka. You know, you never know, right? I saw weed stores on the way. <laughs> Next year. There's no guarantee you'll be right on. Exactly. Next year is the uh, 30th anniversary for 16 Stone. Any big plans to uh, celebrate the album? Um, I should think of something. We should <laughs> think of something. You're right. Um, it's, it's an incredible stat. And um, wow, you know, I'm just so proud that we're making records that are still as challenging and interesting as that. And imagine if it was a situation where I was making really sucky, mid-tempo acoustic <laughs> records, and you only had to talk to me about all the history of the band, <laughs> as opposed to like, you can talk to me about more the machines or like the kingdom and right. just kind of cool tracks. So I'm just happy for that. Just happy to be doing it still in the... In the, in, the, in the mix, and uh, this is a big deal for us to play 815 here in Rocklahoma. It's a big deal. Yeah. Do you know what I mean? It takes a lot of work to Absolutely. get to that point. So I don't want you to think that I don't, I'm not grateful or I don't take it for granted. And so I'm going to try and be extra good tonight, sing extra in tune tonight. <laughs>
You mentioned some of the cool songs, some of the newer stuff. Bullet Holes was one right. that I've really loved over the past few years, and that one was, of course, used for John Wick Chapter 3. Right. With that, was that written specifically for the movie, or did you have it already? I had it already. The weirdest thing is that as that whole wishing symphonies, what happened is I was working with Tyler Bates, and he was doing the music for that movie. And he just played the director. He said, what are you up to? He goes, oh, I'm just working with, uh, with Gavin from Bush and all that stuff. And we played Bullet Holes. And the guy like fell over and was like, oh, my God, we have <laughs> to use this. Because Bullet Holes is like this John Wick through and through. So I maybe was channeling an inner Keanu. No, I thought it was great because it was 15 years after you were in Constantine yeah, with and Keanu. And, and yeah. Chad Stahelski, the director of John Wick, directed us in the... Uh, action scenes where my mum's never forgiven him because he kills me beats the <laughs> shit out of me beats the life out of me my mum's always gets people's name wrong she goes that Carnu Reeves she'll never forgive him but everyone <laughs> else forgave him and he's the biggest star and uh, it's fun to do that on that note Constantine they're doing a um, sequel whenever they figure the writer's strike they're doing a sequel of Constantine so I'm hoping that I get to to, to play the devil's uh, adversary once again, Balthazar. There you go. Are you still interested in doing more acting and stuff Hell like yeah. that? Yeah, yeah, that kind of thing. Yeah, anything great. I just sort of gave up auditioning. Okay. You there know you what go. I mean? <laughs> just wait for the right roles, and it means you get less. But it just it, it will come. I'm due one. I had them on a cup just so the pandemic hit, so I'm due one. The universe, you know, it's going to happen. I feel it. Right. You did a show, uh, no cover, reality show where. You know, bands had a chance to come out, play their music and things like that. What was the experience being a judge on a show like that? Um, really fun, as usual, like getting to know Tosin, getting to know uh, Lizzie Hale, really much better from Hailstorm, of course. Big on your station, I'm sure. She's incredible. And uh, Alice Cooper. It's just fun to get to know them and go to work every day with like-minded people and have some fun and uh, try not to be too judgy, try to be helpful <laughs> with these kids, you know? I don't, you know, people judge me my whole life. They still do all day long. So I try to be constructive in my appraisal of these kids and give them a good, good, good vibe because it really comes down to confidence and people knowing themselves. So I enjoy that process, you know, and some of them are really good, you know, really, really good. There's this band Slay Squad. Uh -huh. Have you heard of Slay Squad? They were incredible. They were so incredible, and I wanted them to win, but they didn't have enough songs. <laughs> they were so early on in their career, and I just saw them actually at um, incarceration. They were playing there. The guy said hello to me. I didn't realize who he was. And then when I remembered, I realized. I was like, wow, so they're really doing it. They're playing Slay Squad, and they were devastating. They were scary. Yeah. I was like, <laughs> okay, I'm legit scared of this band. I better say nice things about them. They might kill me. <laughs> They're so stylish as well. You die in a stylish way. Right. One of the bands that I think is really blown up from the show, and I think one of the critiques was that he didn't have a full band with him, was Julian from Loveless. Those guys have kind of blown up on TikTok. Oh. And um, yeah, okay. yeah, so they, they put out a, a cover, um, one of the songs from Stranger Things last year, and then just skyrocketed. Oh, Bush will be opening for him now. Is that no. <laughs> is that the next step? Like, we won't have a word with you. The good news is the tour is selling out. <laughs> <laughs> no, that's great. Are there plans for another season? Um, I, I would think, I, I hope so. I did really good. Yeah. So makes no sense to not do it again, but I'm just a, a pawn in the game. It's nothing to do with me. Right. Well, real quick before I let you go, I want to ask you about dad life a little bit. I know Kingston kind of had his live debut recently. Did you uh, give him any tips or anything? In Oklahoma, yeah. Yeah. D no, no, no. He's I independent of me. It's the right thing. It's how anthropology works. He has to be independent of me. So he can't be asking me too much. He's got to do it himself. And, um, you know, it makes him stronger. And then he, I find out about it afterwards. I think there's part of me that at first was a bit like surprised at that yeah but i think that it's it's much more healthy and that it's a sign of a a young guy evolving and breaking away from the from me which is healthy it means i've done a good job absolutely well hey man it's been a pleasure to chat with you we appreciate it we're looking forward to this appreciate session. you yeah it's gonna be great